The steel plant's furnaces worked 24 hours a day and needed massive tonnage of coal. Most of the men worked in the pits. Mrs. Shepherd's father worked in Big Pit. Very hard. All day down there for the shifts, you know. But six or seven, I think they'd go from home. Very hard life. But they didn't notice then because they used it. The coal mines were busy, but it was the steel plant close to the town centre that cast a glowing shadow over the town's life, particularly at night. They tipped the ladle up to empty it, and Blenavon would be like one big candle glow all over Blenavon. It was wonderful, wonderful sight. All the town's industry was owned by the Blenavon Company, their works even had their own railway system and rail wheel-making plant. It was all supported by a myriad small engineering works that could manufacture any part, large or small. Every single job that was worth it here was controlled by them. All the coal mines, all the iron works, all the forges, all the quarries, all the major rail transport, everything and the vast majority of people here would have worked for the company. So if you worked in there for them and you were in a company house, it was a case of if you were out of a job, you were out of a house, you were out of the town. By 1900, a thriving shopping town had developed. Friday was payday for Blynavon employees, and the weekend was the time for the workers to let their hair down. And on a Saturday night, town would be full and we'd say to go drinking and one thing and the other. Oh, very busy. But life in Blynavon was to be shattered in 1914 when the Great War broke out. Hundreds of Blynavon men left the works to fight for king and country. Many factories turned to war work, like the mustard gas factory and munitions works that gave women a chance for new employment. But the war was a massive boost to the steel industry as well, as the demand for steel shot up. Such was the call for it that a huge, brand new steel plant was opened in 1917. They installed a, a new series of steel making plant there, uh, modernising it. It's probably one of the most modern steelworks in Britain, if not in Europe at the time. And people started flooding back in again. Cumbran is a large town in a valley a few miles north of Newport in Gwent. More than any other area of Wales, Cumbran has seen incredible changes during the last hundred years. In 1900, it was a mainly rural valley, but at its heart, there was a string of industrial villages like Cumbran, Pontnewydd and Forgehammer. They were dominated by heavy industry, coal, iron and tin plate, built up around a canal and then the railway. The largest works was the huge Guestkeen and Nettlefolds. The area was well known as the home of John Williams, a Boer War VC, but the Cumbran that he knew would change beyond recognition. The area was a microcosm of the Wales of 1900. The old-fashioned legacy of the Industrial Revolution on the one hand and the unchanging rural past on the other. But in the course of the 20th century, the Cumbran area would undergo greater changes than those experienced by any other part of Wales. Although the valley was largely rural, with an ancient flour mill at Llanaravon and many small farms dotted around the area, most people worked at the Guestkeen and Nettlefold foundry. Guestkeen's there was the big mill. My father worked in the foundry where they used to make plates for the chairs for the railways. Many of the workers lived in the unique village of Forgehammer in the shadow of the works. The poorest part of the town, Forgehammer. People used to look down on us if you said he was in from Paul Jam, but 
I tell you this, they were poor. They were poor people, but they were good, honest people. The factory's hooter acted as a timekeeper for the life of the surrounding villages. The hooter went, it was four o'clock, it was time for to go home. You could hear the tramp of the working boots as they came down Clemendi Road from the Gaskine and Nettle Falls factory. But some of the industry had a bad effect on the town. In Cumbran village, there was the huge vitriol chemical works serving the tin plate industry. Oh, the chemical works was terrible. We lived in Bellevue Road, and the chemical works was just over the line from where we lived, you know. And, oh, it used the smell used to be terrible from there. And there'd be chimneys with this oh, rusty smoke coming out of it, you know, and it used to smell awful. And we used to have to walk around like this, It'd take your breath away, you know. Coal was an important part of the area's industrial growth. Most colliers lived in the village of Upper Cumbran, and work there started early in the morning. My father was a miner. My brother was a miner. Yes, they walked to work. They carried a, a lamp with them. That was what they had to find their way from home to the colliery. Oh, they worked very hard because they had to, to earn a living. When the First World War broke out, many of the colliers volunteered to go and fight in France. They had a strong sense of duty, and many gave their lives for king and country. But the men that came back after four long years of war returned to an area in economic difficulties. There was a slump in the demand for coal, and many people in Cumbran faced a depressing time in the 20s. 